Hi, my name is MK1 Jeffrey Redman. I'm with Engineering Systems School Fast Response Cutter staff at Training Center Yorktown. This video will cover the removal and replacement of the MTU 20V 4000 M93L turbocharger. The MPC that coincides with this task is Alpha 51001 decimal D. This is part of one, part one of a three-part series. Part one is removal, part two is disassembly and reassembly, and part three is installation. This task is normally performed as part of a 6,000 hour QL3 maintenance or as a corrective maintenance upon failure. This video is for familiarization with the task and shall not take place of official procedures promulgated by a patrol world product line. Before starting, let's cover the tools and some safety. MTU General Toolkit. Two M12 lifting shackles, a lifting strap, MTU Universal Toolkit, as well as the General Purpose Toolkit. It is required to remove engine coolant per MPC Alpha 51111 decimal D. We've already done this, so let's get started. Remove the lagging and disconnect the exhaust bellows from the exhaust elbow. Remove the turbocharger air inlet per MPC A52042 decimal D. Ensure you disconnect the turbocharger speed sensor connector. Remove the charge air lines going from the turbocharger to the intercooler. This will involve often removing lube oil lines that go to the flap actuators, brackets that cover those pipes, and once you get all the brackets out of the way and your lube oil lines out of the way, you can take the pipe off as an assembly. It's best to keep the pipe together as much as possible to aid in draining any fluid that's in it into a bucket upon removal. On the B side of the engine, it will be necessary to remove the coolant supply and return piping from the coolant housing to the intercooler. Again, it's best to remove this as much in as, as an assembly as possible and carefully drain into a bucket. It's advisable when you're doing the turbocharger tasks to take some pictures ahead of time because you've got a lot of coolant lines, lube oil lines, charge air piping that all has to go back together exactly correctly. At this point, we're going to remove the charge air transfer piping between the intercooler and the charge air transfer valve. Remove the coolant vent lines, lube oil supply lines that are all together like a spider. Matter of fact, we called this the spider when we pulled it off the engine. Again, best to pull it as an assembly and reminder again, take pictures before you remove all this stuff to aid in putting it back together when you're done. Remove any additional charger piping and housings that lead from the turbocharger to the intercooler as these will be required for some turbos, but not all. We're now going to remove the lube oil drain line and lube oil supply line to the turbocharger. This is a great time while you're down there to also remove the exhaust thermocouple for that turbocharger as well. Also going to remove the coolant supply line to the compressor side of the turbo. And from there, we're going to go right into the attaching bolts that attach the carrier housings to the exhaust manifold. It's necessary on some of the turbos to remove bolts to attach the approved lifting eyes. There are two lifting eyes, one into each half of each carrier housing. After the lifting eyes are attached, 
attach to your approved lifting apparatus and get ready to actually lift the turbo off of the engine. Once the turbocharger is free from the engine, carefully lower it onto a wooden dolly or a pallet, getting ready to take it over to the port side hatch for removal from the engine room. 